Oops. Maybe a bit higher. That's good. Thank you. Oh, you're nearly there. Only 15 minutes or so to drinks. So, <laughs> oh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. And um, I just, you know, ni hao ma to Hon Lake. And um, greetings from Dr. Murray Logerson, my colleague in New Zealand. And it's just really wonderful and a bit intimidating to be on the podium uh, this afternoon after such an esteemed lineup. Um, I shall just try this. Jen Dobra. So, good afternoon. And I am Maria Waglava. I'm now at the university, at Massey University in uh, New Zealand. So, it's my new position uh, as an associate professor in the new College of Health there. Uh, I'm a behavioral scientist, and I have specialized in tobacco control research, which it's now, it's now 20 years, actually. Time goes so quickly, doesn't it? Uh, I'm also chair of N Smoking NZ, and uh, where I continue to work with Dr. Murray Logerson and Trish Fraser, ex-director of ASH in New Zealand, and some other great colleagues. Um, in Smoking NZ, we're, we're very influenced by Honlick's work, and we obviously want to end smoking in New Zealand. So, uh, just on conflicts of interest, and thank you very much for funding my travel here so I could be here with you today. You've been fantastic to me, and I've been learning a lot. Uh, you, you know, it's really interesting. I also want to thank Monique Lear School of the New Zealand Ministry of Health, who provided background information so that I'm giving you the most up-to-date uh, and correct information. And I'd also like to acknowledge QJ from NewZealandVapor.com for talking to me about uh, the situation for New Zealand vapors. So a few, three things. i um, just give you a bit of the context of New Zealand because as others have said, it's important to look at the context in each country, maybe different situation. Uh, what's happening for New Zealand vapors and what's our potential vaping futures. So the current context in New Zealand, we had existing legislation, existing laws that are being applied, I would say, against e-cigarettes. So we have the Medicines Act and the Smoke-Free Environments Act, which we're famous for, and keeping in mind that that was brought in in 1990, so we have quite a substantial history of smoke-free environments and reducing our smoking prevalence. We also have this goal to reach and uh, become the first smoke-free nation in the world, to reach 5% or below in smoking prevalence. I think that's daily. <laughs> Uh, by 2025. Where are we at now? Daily 15%. So actually it doesn't look like we're doing that great against, uh, you're doing very, very well and, and against Australia. So uh, we non-daily, including non-daily would be about 17%. So I put that in just for you after what you said last night. So under the Medicines Act, the sale of nicotine containing, I'm using the term N, so electronic nicotine delivery systems for non-therapeutic, not med medical use is prohibited in New Zealand. No nicotine. Nicotine containing electronic nicotine delivery systems can only be sold for therapeutic use, that is for smoking cessation, if they have been approved by our MedSafe organization. No products have so far been put through that process. So we have no approved electronic nicotine delivery systems. Note industry people in the audience. <laughs> okay, now under the Smoke-Free Environments Act, there's also some clauses in there that impact on vaping in New Zealand. Electronic nicotine delivery systems with or without nicotine, so the hardware, that resembles a tobacco product, a cigarette or a pipe, that can be used to simulate smoking, cloud, hand to mouth. It's defined as a toy tobacco product and it cannot be sold to anybody under 18 years of age. Ends containing nicotine derived from tobacco 
and not registered as a medicine under the, under the Medicine Act, they are defined under the Smoke-Free Environments Act as an oral tobacco product that is not smoked. And therefore, under that act, it is illegal to advertise, import for sale, sell, pack, or distribute, or even give, distribute as in give to a friend. So uh, no sales to under 18, that's a good thing. We would probably want that in regulation anyway, so we already have that. But we do not have legal um, sale of nicotine for the use and ends. Now prevalence, we don't have very good data. Unfortunately, this is just uh, one survey and they only pulled out, well, I think they only asked current smokers <clears throat> and ex-smokers if they had ever used uh, electronic cigarette. So here, actually, it's not far off your UK ones where we have 50% have tried one we don't know when and we don't know how many times and we don't know if it had nicotine or not so pretty useless really we need better data uh, and current current use is very low so i mean i would conclude from this as i think you would also conclude without access to nicotine uh, it's pretty useless people aren't going to continue to use them and it's not going to help us reduce smoking prevalence in new zealand so, where to for the land of the long white cloud? The Māori name for, Aote for New Zealand is Aotearoa, and that's what it means, land of the long white cloud. Well, I'm not sure that that white cloud is going to come from vaping in the future. So we have the status quo. That's where we are at the moment. Uh, vapors can import online for their own personal use. They can buy it overseas and bring it home to, and, you know, so... At least they, some of them, some can access nicotine for their devices. I would say that the majority of my colleagues in public health and the tobacco control sector want to move towards tighter restrictions. The Ministry of Health is just waiting for academic consensus, which may or may not come. The tighter restrictions as Derek referred to, if you know, they want and they're proposing, uh, it's a move, a positive move, I think that there is some recognition of the potential benefits of electronic uh, nicotine delivery systems for reducing smoking prevalence, because now some of them that were very anti are now saying, okay, might be good, but you can only get it through a pharmacy. Uh, and actually it would be really preferable if you had a doctor's prescription to do so. Um, I would see that as much tighter than what we have now, uh, not positive move. So that's probably the majority are sitting there. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, there's a few more out there in Smoking NZ board members, and we want to see some regulatory um, changes obviously uh, these are my personal views because we actually can't agree even among ourselves about what we should have uh, but I would say that we need um, nicotine e-juice sold in New Zealand and uh, potentially that will be by limited retailers maybe vape shops not sure that we'll be able to get that um, and the, the problem with that is that my sister, for instance, who lives in a remote area and has to drive 15 minutes to get cigarettes at the petrol station or the dairy, that I, there's never going to be a vape shop there. And I want her to be able to access it as well. And she doesn't go online. And So if you can buy cigarettes, then you should be able to buy e-juice and the hardware at the same place, as far as I'm concerned for those people in remote areas to be able to access this technology. I, I have learned, I'm learning more that, you know, those people who go in for the first time, they need information to help them choose the right product and what's going to work for the most effect for them. So I think that we're going to have to allow some point of sale, at least point of sale information, which would otherwise be called marketing. Um, otherwise, in New Zealand, I, don't, I think we we will not let go, we won't allow broader marketing. 
Uh, and in terms of vaping inside, at the moment, the current laws don't ban smoking inside, but our local vapors are just politely vaping and they go outside. Um, they would smoke inside if it's okay with the owner of the premises and they're not, as Donna taught me, the term and Attila poking the bear. So they're, not, they're trying not to attract attention to themselves, although it's getting pretty close. We need to do something or we won't get any change at all to the status quo. Now, my colleague Trish Fraser uh, has just led a small uh, key stakeholder survey, and it, interestingly, it was mainly positive. Most of the participants, so they're in key informants, influencers, health sector, cessation workers, there was um, support for wider access to nicotine for use in electronic nicotine delivery devices. But, uh, and, and, they, and this included some smokers as well, so that's good. Um, also though, they all want more information. So ignorance is a real problem. Uh, and I know just from how much I've learned um, from my Australian mates over the ditch, and just being here with you all, um, we, we've got to do a lot of work um, with our local tobacco control sector, our cessation workers, in just you know, removing some of that ignorance around this new phenomenon. I'd just like to share a Māori proverb. Um, he aha te mea nui, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing? It is people. It is people. It is people. Debate towards a consensus in New Zealand and potentially elsewhere about what laws we're going to need is being limited by a focus on electronic nicotine delivery devices as a product in relation to tobacco products only not as a product, a new technology, a product standalone on its own. And vapors are mistakenly classified and thought of only as smokers. And this is holding us back. It's stopping us from seeing outside the tobacco control framework, that box. Um, this is from the Trojan horse, is in David and Ray's paper um, that I read in preparation for this. And I want to propose that ends are a Trojan horse, but not in the sense feared by those opposed to electronic cigarettes. The army that flows from the belly of the Trojan horse, yeah, I know you know, because some of you have been saying this yourselves in your presentation. The army that flows from the belly of the Trojan horse will grow in number until they swamp us in tobacco control and in their thousands they could rise up larger than the David we have ever been against the Goliath tobacco industry. And they are. The end of smoking, the end game is not in the product, the e-cigarette, it is in the people who have embraced the product as their saviour the vapors who have found their well-being transformed, who are sharing their success, who are turning to help others to quit smoking, even if it is to switch to vaping first. They will reach and succeed at supporting far more sustained quitting than our meagerly funded, and I'm sorry to say, hit and miss and not very effective. We absolutely know in New Zealand that our cessation services are not working. $14,000 per sustained quit attempt. We have, we, the government are just dumping it all and going through a, a whole retendering and oh my gosh, what are we going to do? It's that bad. And here we have a whole new community of people, a whole new identity, a whole new, you know, thousands and thousands of people who will go out and will help more people quit and stay quit and get off smoking. Unless we stop them, 
why don't we stop them, you know, like, that has got to be absolutely contrary to our public health goal of reducing death and disease, but that is what doctors and nurses and cessation workers and tobacco control people who have been in this longer than me are trying to stop this from happening. Instead, we need to be working with the vaping community, which you're doing at this conference, and we haven't done hardly, we haven't even started to do at home. There may be things that we in tobacco control can do to help the vaping community in their fight against the tobacco industry, against the governments and those that would want to shut it down. Um, New Zealand is a small country we have about 675,000 smokers left. And working together with vapors, I think we could achieve the smoke-free New Zealand 2025 goal. We're certainly not going to get there doing what we're doing. Um, I just want to pick up on one point, Derek, that you said. And I think in terms of the tobacco industry, there's one thing they could do to send a very clear message that they are willing and want to change. And that is they could voluntarily withdraw tobacco, smoke tobacco products from New Zealand, because we're so small anyway. I mean, it's not going to hurt, is it? Um, so that would be a good sign. And, and bring those products. Come and put them before MedSafe. I know we're a small market, but we like to see ourselves as an important player in tobacco control. We've led the way on some things. And we do hope to beat you all to becoming a smoke-free nation. Uh, and liberation lies in the transformation of that status quo. So thank you very much.